Tasmina Ahmed Sheikh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, since our election in May, all new MPs have faced a range of new experiences and challenges. Today's vote will, of course, mark one of the most significant decisions we've taken in our careers to date, and we do not wear it lightly. I respect the sincerity with which the Prime Minister made his case today, although expressed disappointment at the words he chose to use last night to describe those who, with equal sincerity, disagree with his view. Those of us who find ourselves in support of the amendment to the Government's motion have also thought long and hard about our decision and the enormous consequences it will have for so many. We have each listened to our constituents and the organisations the length and breadth of the country who have contacted us to share their views. We have also considered and acknowledged the outstanding service of the brave women and men of our armed forces who put their lives on the line to protect us every single day. But, Mr Speaker, we have also thought as well about our own security of the people of Syria. While much of today's discussion has been on the Government's motion and the efficacy or otherwise of military action, there is another important perspective on this catastrophic situation, that of the people of Syria and those in the Middle East who have been so deeply and tragically affected by this conflict, and whether adding to the multiple countries already bombing Syria will help them or indeed our security at all. Have the intervention. Thank you, friend, for giving way. Would she agree with me that in all of these discussions and considerations, we must think about the human cost on the ground, and in particular those vulnerable groups, for example, the LGBTI community, who we have not talked about, who are already being persecuted, other than the member uh, across it, who made a brief mention, that, that, they, that they are already being persecuted, and further bombing will only make that situation worse. Yeah. I thank the honourable friend for her intervention and would implore other members of this House to give the respect to us that we have given to them as we have listened to their interventions too. Your intervention has been heard and I agree with it in its entirety. More than half the Syrian population are now living in poverty and civilian casualties are on the increase. Recent, recent Russian airstrikes have killed 485 civilians, including 117 children and 47 women. The facts relating to this, this vicious conflict are alarming and it is difficult to imagine the human stories which lie behind them. That is why I visited Nizip uh, refugee camp near Gaziantep to see for myself the scale of the humanitarian disaster there and to hear firsthand the accounts of refugees who have fled Syria. Mr Speaker, I listened as the people told me how their families have been uprooted by violence who want nothing more than to return home. I heard that their towns and villages had been reduced to rubble by airstrikes Airstrikes ordered by President Assad. I spoke to Nafal Hassan from Idlib. Her house was flattened by Assad forces in an attack which killed her mother, father, brother, and husband. I met with Basil from Damascus. He spent two years in prison being tortured by Assad's security services. He is now unable to walk, confined to a wheelchair. Mohammed was a pilot in the Syrian Air Force and fled the country with his family when he was asked to take part in bombing raids on civilian targets within his own country. Salwa, who is a writer, said to me, we are not numbers, we are not animals. We want to be human beings, not numbers on a page. And I'm not a woman after this conflict. I have no <coughs> dreams. I just want to go home, but Daesh are occupying my home now. What these individuals and families were united in was their desire to return home one day to rebuild their lives. They are human beings with a story, and that story should be heard. A story which confirms to us all the complex nature of what is happening in the region and the number of protagonists already involved, crucially with different agendas and different targets. Many issues require to be addressed for Syria to be returned to peace, but the proposals today before us do not do this. We need a plan to defeat the terrorist cult Daesh and to replace Assad. We also need to have a plan to help rebuild Syria and a better future for the people I have mentioned and so many more. Mr Speaker, to join the already ongoing bombing campaign in the skies over Syria will only compound human suffering. 
Military intervention without credible peace-building plans will only make the situation worse, just as it did in Libya, Iraq and Afghanistan. A comprehensive strategy against Daesh is required. The UK could take the lead in a more coordinated effort to help identify and squeeze Daesh finances and disrupt illegal trade. Lead a diplomatic initiative using its non-combative position to secure a long-term peace plan. This is not in today's motion, Mr Speaker, and while I'll be supporting the amendment and voting against the Government motion.